My painting, G-Dub Explained, Part 1. Redcoats versus Blue, the Crown versus the Colonies. The early American colonists that formed the Patriot Army were at a disadvantage from the jump. The Patriots were untrained, unpaid, underfed citizens buying their own clothes and shoes for their uniform. At times, the Patriot soldiers were unarmed. When their shoes wore out, some tied rags around their feet. Britain had the most powerful navy in the world at the time. The British soldiers were outfitted with quality uniforms, trained and paid with military experience. The British Army outnumbered the Patriots and were far better supplied with supplies and rations. The Redcoats were fighting for the King, far away, and the Patriots, they were fighting for their own independence, their land and their families right here, right now. Is that what ultimately led to their victory? Yes. Also, the French helped. George Washington loved dogs. Here's proof. During a battle against the British Army, a sweet little dog wandered onto the field of the Continental Army. General Washington scooped up the pup and took him to his tent where he brushed and fed the dog. When Washington read the tag on the good boy's collar, he learned that this dog belonged to the Brits. After the pup finished his rations, Washington called for a ceasefire so the dog could be safely returned to General Howe, the rightful dog dad. Washington dictated this note and it was written in the hand of Alexander Hamilton. The note was attached to the collar of the dog then returned. General Washington's compliments to General Howe does himself the pleasure to return to him a dog which accidentally fell into his hands and by the inscription on the collar appears to belong to General Howe. Many believe that this wasn't just a kind gesture, but that General Washington was positioning himself to take a peek at the Brits camp. Either way, I like it.